back in the day when I entered stuff in the competition, I would actually get all my stuff done at uh, uh, Frame It Yourself uh, on Claremont. And then also, you know, John's got a place, uh, and obviously Trips Highway, but you can um, uh, go someplace where it's a professional, have them do it. Because every year we kick out several pictures that come in that looks like somebody cut them out with a toenail clipper. Yeah. yeah. Well, that brings up a good point because to me, there's two things that make these images will make them work. First, and we've already discussed it. It's got to be unique, particularly if it's a a, 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 a familiar subject. But the second thing, and we talk about this all the time, the number of post processing errors that we see in images that could have been absolutely dynamite is staggering. How many images have we seen? Dave has a saying, we were just talking about this, the inestimable in David King says <laughs> that we as judges know there's a photo in there somewhere, but it's not us to, uh, up to us to find it. In other words, one of the biggest things we see a lot is just not cropping properly, you know? Uh, so I just want to kind of throw Along that Along that there. line, David took the time and effort last year yeah. We contacted some people who had entered, some that had actually got in the show, some that hadn't, got permission from them, and he reworked like 10, 10 images, know, something like that, mm -hmm. put together a, a video of it. The link is, there's some papers up there on that table that you can take pictures of. The link to that is there. It's also on um, the coordinator's Facebook page. Uh, it's well worth watching to see how Little changes made a huge difference. We're trying to promote some of the other judges to do yeah, a we'll similar get, thing. Uh, you know? Some people yeah. in, input. Uh, after I did that, <coughs> and I, it took me the finish time on that video is about an hour. Yeah, it took me about 20. between four and five hours to do it. <laughs> the uh, but we decided what would be cool is to do two things. Number one, get more of the judges to do that in their categories. So there was more and more critique work. And then have Gene pick maybe five shots and however many judges he could get to go along with this and have each of us on our own independently edit those photographs. And the purpose of that would be to show you that editing is as much a part of the art as taking it. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. odds are really good that of those uh, five, let's say five judges, you'd have five different finished pieces to come out. And I think that would be important for you to see that, that we attack things. If I'm working with a student or, or with a client and they tell me what they want, that's one thing. But if I'm doing it on my own, like we did with these, the only thing I have to go by is what would I do with this shot? So and that's interesting to see if we could compare that. Not that one is, well, depending on your vision for it, you might like one better than the other. But they're all viable. They all would probably, when one or the other of us finished with it, would probably get accepted into the fair. So it would be worth your while to look at those. It's not unusual to have uh, tier two prints that looked really nice on the, uh, the monitors okay. uh, <laughs> come back looking like somebody had just bombed them. And uh, it's rare that, at least in this group, that we reject prints for something like that. But what if you had a great strong image and, and, and your, your post-processing is, is mediocre? It's probably not going to place. In other words, honorable mention fourth through first. I if, got jumped yeah. on when I did that uh, critique, the online, the video critique, because I only used Photoshop in it. And people were saying, why were we using Lightroom? The reason I wasn't using Lightroom is I think what we were doing there went so far beyond Lightroom that you need to, people need to get over that. If you're a photojournalist or a sports photographer, a wedding photographer, somebody who produces lots of shots that all need this, this massive editing thing and it needs to be done fast, Lightroom is your tool, no doubt about it. But if you want to take an individual shot and wring every last bit of of visual value out of it, get over Lightroom and learn to use Photoshop and use it right. Or what are the other better ones like Capture One? Or, there are a number of other really good editors out there, but it's not Lightroom. That's the wrong tool for that job. Well, Photoshop is a Ferrari, whereas Lightroom is 
a Taurus. I'll use that because I have a Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't say, insult Taurus. So like, a Yugo, but that's the, uh, <laughs> Lightroom, Lightroom is a great program, but uh, its developing module is basically the same as Camera Raw. And any of you who are working in Photoshop, just a show of hand, how many of you using Photoshop, your goal is to try to get everything done in Camera Raw? You would like to get everything done there and never go into Photoshop? No. no. You begin there. But your goal is you always end up in Photoshop. And so that's what I always tell everybody with Lightroom. It's, a, it's, a, it's identical. So, yeah, it's a great place to start. But your goal isn't to end there. Your goal is to get an image ready to go into Photoshop. And that's what our raw files need. We need to have a raw processor. But Dave's absolutely right. You've got to get into Photoshop. And I'm going to say if you want to compete at that level that we see the winning images at the fair, I, mean, I can't say hands down, but I would say I'll guarantee you a majority of them have been through Photoshop. How many of you guys are old film shooters? Or why old? <laughs> old. I, I'm well, old. Let me rephrase that. I'm old and I used to be. Used to be. Yeah, let me rephrase that. How many of you are former? <laughs> That's when uh -huh. <laughs> Well, you may recall that there were two distinct phases in the process, well, three if you count capture, of that image. You captured it. If you were into the zone system, you did what you had to do to try to get all of the tones possible on the back. Then you went into a development phase, and you had a lot of options there, different types of developers, different developing approaches like water bath development, <laughs> all of those things that you could do to adjust those tones further. And finally, you got into the dark room where now with the enlarger and filters or whatever you were using, different kinds of paper, you tweaked it even more, plus you could deal with selected areas. Digital has a perfect analog to that. And that camera raw version is your, Lightroom does call it correctly, that really is the development module. That's where you can get in. Take that image that hopefully you've captured well. But, and I think most of the people here would agree, you hear all kinds of stuff in the uh, magazines. Well, you don't have to worry about any of that because you can fix it in RAW. No, you can't. <laughs> if you want a perfect print, final print, final image, it's got to be a perfect caption.